Have you ever been staring at a clock and decided that it just looks boring or is that just me? Well, that's exactly it. I want to create a cool looking clock and I don't want it to have a minute, hour or second hand and I want it to be absolutely gears galore. I've never worked with clocks and I've never worked with gears. So let's dive straight into this. And very quickly, a small portion of this video is sponsored by PCBWay. Now, just before I jump into my design program of choice, which is going to be Blender, I need to decide exactly how I'm gonna power this. Now I could do an escapement mechanism, which is one of those things that goes tick, tick under a clock, but I don't wanna complicate my life with that. Instead, I'm gonna complicate it with a motor that goes 120 RPM. And I know engineers out there, this has voltage variability. I will change this and do something better later on, but this is good enough to get me started to see if I can actually create a clock. So from there, we need to jump into Blender and I'm gonna use Precision Gears, which is a parametric add-on that lets me create a whole bunch of gears inside of Blender, rig them up all together because I have no idea how I'm gonna figure out the gear ratios for this. Because I've decided that I want one gear that's gonna turn once per day, another gear that's gonna turn once per hour, and another gear that's gonna turn once per minute. Now, the way that I'm gonna figure out all these ratios is I'm literally just gonna be putting a cube onto the gears, and then from there I can just look at this cube turning around and calculate out from there. Now, this is a great idea in general. It's only if you make sure that you're paying attention because I might have got a little bit overconfident. There you have it. That's all the gears that we're gonna be needing. <laughs> this took me four hours of playing around, and the key thing here is that, look, I've got a timeline of 518,400 frames. Oh my, how naive I was. I missed out an entire zero there. What the actual FPS per day is 5,184,000 frames. So I was very much wrong. Now, the fun part is I carry on designing with this for quite some time. So we're gonna carry on checking in on that Jonathan that thought that design works just fine. So the actual end result of after playing around was this many gears right here. Now that was a lot more gears than I actually expected it to be, but at the same time, I think this is going to look pretty good. Now there were still some questions in mind. How exactly am I going to have the axles for all of this? Am I going to put bearings in this if not? And all of that. So I'm going to do a little bit of thinking and I'll come back right to you. So I've done some testing, I've done some thinking, and I've done a little bit of designing. So first I am going to go with skate bearings and I'm going to go with four millimeter wooden dowels for the axles. I know it's a little bit strange, but it's all I have at hand. And I think it'll be easier for anyone out there who wants to recreate this design themselves. I've created some spacers to go with the dowels and this goes in there perfectly fine. We need this because we have way too many gears and I don't want friction to be a problem. Now, the size of the gears was gonna be a problem as well. This here was gonna be the first driving gear coming from this and that's quite big for a 10 tooth gear. So I've resized everything to fit much smaller indeed. Now, past me did get quite far along in the design at this point. So let's just see that little moment where things just click into place that everything is broken. This here is how the design was going and here it is. Oh my God, I cannot believe this. So I'm maybe a good hour away from finishing the design and I've just realized that the whole thing is broken. Um, I, for some reason, while I was doing the little circles that show you exactly what the minute and hour is going on, I saw there that the hour gear is actually turning 10 times an hour. So yeah, you need to go back like 300 steps and go from the ground up. There's definitely not going to happen today, so... <sighs> Anyway, just got to fix this. Just got to fix this. Just going to go back, fix the gear ratios. Then from there, we'll go forward. I'm just going to get to the point that we're at this point in the design, which is really far on, which is it's almost done. It's looking really good already, but now it's going to look something completely different to this. So let's just dive into it. 
And now with my spirits thoroughly crushed, let's talk about the final layout that I did go with. So this is it here. As you can see, there's a lot of gears. It's looking quite packed. And I think that's going to look amazing once it actually has all the numbers and all the gaps and the lattice holding it. So we're going to jump to that real soon because I don't want to bore you with the design anymore. But I do want to let you know of a couple design changes. So here's that outer ring for the first design. Yes, I was that close to finishing this project. I'm not happy with the numbers. They're not popping out enough for me. So I've decided that I'm actually going to go with two tone colors instead, because I think that's going to just work so much better. I also forgot to mention that everything is a herringbone gear. So all the gears are self-centering, so I don't have to worry about them slipping off one another. Now, from there, let's just jump straight to the end result. This here is the design that I'm going with. This is, by the way, still pretty much all parametric, all the gear part anyway, and the lattice I've had to split it up into a whole bunch of sections, but I think that just adds even more intrigue into the design. So this is quite full on. Let's go and get this all printed because I still don't have that all done. And then once we've done that, we'll put it all together. But just very quickly, a quick message from this video sponsor. PCB Way is here to supercharge your maker journey with a wide range of top-notch budget-friendly services. Beyond PCBs, they offer CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and a full palette of 3D printing services. Find out more about PCBWay by clicking the link down in the description. And a huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. And there it is, after days of designing and hours of printing, it's all ready to be put together and I still have no idea if this is gonna work or not. So let's go find out together. And here it is, my reimagined version of a cool looking clock for 3D printing and truly I am so happy with this end result. It is looking so overly complicated, but at the same time simple in its own way. Now I'm going to turn it on and see if it works real soon, but just before that, a massive thank you to my patrons. Truly, without you I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing here on Maker Tales. So if you're enjoying what I'm doing here and you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. Right, let's turn this on and see if it even works. All right, it's working, it's moving. It's a little bit noisy, but don't worry. I'm gonna sort all that out because I have a stepper motor here. I've got some silent drivers coming, so I'm gonna be able to have this nice and quiet and in the background for a whole bunch of maker tail shots. So there's that. Now let's go to the final reveal. But just before I do that, if you want to get a hold of this, it's linked down in the description. And if you want to get started with Blender, I have a crash course down there as well. Thank you for watching. Keep making and let the quest continue.